Well, let's get to that breaking news from overnight. A bicyclist, bicyclist killed in a crash. That's right. It happened in North Minneapolis at the intersection of Humboldt and Dowling next to Falwell Park. Kaya is there live now with what we're learning this morning, Kaya. Good morning. The Minneapolis police say the, a man was riding his bike on this street behind me, Humboldt, and they say he failed to stop at a stop sign and was hit by a car. Now you will notice that the cross street Dowling there, there aren't any stop signs there for traffic going by. Now we want to take you to the scene from overnight as police responded. Police say the bicyclist did die on scene and so far in the investigation they're saying there's no signs of drugs or alcohol that the driver is cooperating and no arrests are expected. Now we did look into the number of crashes so far this year in Minnesota and the Minnesota Department of Public Safety says uh, that between January and last month, June, that 151 people died in crashes, but only two of those were bicyclists. Chris, Gia? All right, Kaya live in North Minneapolis. Thanks, Kaya. Here's a quick reminder as you head out the door this morning, all bicyclists are required to follow the same traffic laws as motorists. That includes stopping at stop signs and stoplights. You also need to signal when you're turning and wear lights or reflectors when riding at night. If you're driving a car, you cannot drive in the bike lanes unless you are making a turn and you should give bike riders three feet or more of space. Let's get to today's digital dive. A closer look at a story trending online. The countdown is on. Here's a live picture from our nation's capital where in just a couple hours, former special counsel Robert Mueller will be grilled by lawmakers on the Russia report. House Democrats huddling in a last minute practice session last night. It's a make or break moment for their case against the president. This morning, the Justice Department is instructing Mueller that he must stay within the boundaries of ago, his report. Alicia explains how we got to this point. Alicia? Yeah, Gia, this entire thing, it's been going on for more than three years now. So let's take a quick look back at what got us to today's testimony. Now, in May of 2016, the Russia investigation started with a warning about Donald Trump's presidential campaign foreign policy advisor by leaders from Australia. A Trump advisor was in London where he was accused of bragging to an Australian diplomat that the Russians had dirt on Hillary Clinton. Now, just a few months later, WikiLeaks started publishing emails uh, that were stolen from the Democratic National Committee's servers. Soon after that, the FBI launched into investigation of possible links between the Russians and Trump campaign officials. And by 2017, several congressional committees had gotten involved with investigations of their own. Now, Trump, he was actually firing his FBI director, James Comey, at the time, and Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused himself. And that's when special counsel Robert Mueller was appointed to lead the investigation. So let's fast forward to April of 2019. Just four months ago, the Mueller report was released, all 438 pages of it. It states that the investigation did not find sufficient evidence to pursue charges charges, but it did not clear the president of any wrongdoing either. Robert Mueller will be answering some pretty tough questions today about that report. The president has been tweeting about it all week and just 15 minutes ago, he tweeted this accusing Democrats of fabricating a crime and pinning it on a very innocent president. Now, the biggest looming question that Democrats are hoping to get answered today is if Mueller would have charged Trump if he was not a sitting president. The likelihood that Robert Mueller answers that question is very slim. Yeah, so here's the thing. Probably gonna have some fireworks today. Probably gonna get great sound bites. How much this is going to impact anything that's questionable. But a lot of people didn't read the whole 438 yeah. page report, so they might learn something. Yeah. All right, Alicia, thanks. And you can catch special coverage of Mueller's testimony in about an hour. NBC News begins its live team reports at 715 right after sunrise. Here's a look at today's top stories in your morning rush. A Washington County Sheriff's deputy has been indicted for manslaughter after a deadly shooting in Lake Elmo. That's according to the victim's family attorney. The BCA says a deputy shot and killed Ben Evans in April 2018 after police got a call about a person threatening to commit suicide with a gun. We're not naming the deputy yet since the deputy has not been officially charged. This is Elk River, home of the Sherburne County Jail, which currently has a contract with ICE to hold up to 300 immigrants. Now there's an idea to expand the jail to accommodate 500 of those immigrants. People say it would be good for the economy locally, but opponents say that Elk River should not be known 
as the place where they hold immigrants for ICE. More bad news this morning for a former Viking. Adrian Peterson's attorney says his client is in deep debt because he was, quote, trusting the wrong people. The news comes despite Peterson making over $100 million in salaries and endorsements during his career. According to The Athletic, Peterson owes millions after reportedly defaulting on a loan. Will they ever reopen? Four beaches in Minneapolis will stay closed for at least another week because of E. coli. Three of them are at Bede Makaska, and the fourth is Lake Hiawatha Beach. The Parks and Rec Board says these closures are normal, but they usually happen later in the year. And that's your Wednesday morning rush. Now let's head over to Sven for the One Thing Weather. Thanks for that, Chris. Yes, we're looking at a beautiful day today. Back into the middle 80s, still comfortable, but that humidity is going to be on the increase tomorrow. We're going to talk more about that coming up. And the orange cones are in place. Highway 12 is going to have some lane restrictions today near the Central Avenue Bridge as they continue to work on that. So if this is your route this morning, give yourself plenty of time. All right, thank you, Alicia. A very rare new shark species has been recently been discovered by scientists and it glows in the dark. Sven, you're here to explain that. What? Yes, I know. Researchers from NOAA and Tulane University discovered the shark back in 2010 and just now confirmed it as a new species in the latest edition of the journal Zootaxa. I know Chris uh, subscribes My to favorite. that. My yeah, favorite. these sharks are small though, only five and a half inches and only two have ever been discovered in different oceans and they're actually different species. The shark uses its glowing fluid to attract prey while it hides beneath them and then attacks. So it's pretty cool. We don't know a whole lot more about it, but um, it, it just tells scientists that there's so much that we don't understand in our own ocean depth. Sure. You know, we just got off of the anniversary of the Apollo mm -hmm. program and space is this amazing frontier, but there's actually a lot in the ocean we don't understand. And, you know, a place like the Gulf of Mexico where a lot of things were affected by the oil spill, you don't want to lose these species before we discover them either. So. Yeah. yeah, five and a half inches is not very big, no, but... That's so scary. If it were a great white that glowed yeah. in the dark, Still, that would be scary. At least you could see it coming at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. True. Thanks, Ben. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the definition of heroic. Police drag a man from a burning car, but it wasn't that simple. <clears throat> we'll tell you the great lengths these officers went to save a life. Then you got a new iPhone. Good for you. But what about all the pictures and data on your old one? What you should be doing to make sure it's not lost forever. And we are talking about Minneapolis Aqua Tenniel because it all kicks off today and tonight it's great. And you can check out the guy, these guys, Petzl Aztec. We're going to show you much more coming up.